Hello everyone, I'm Major Jib, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at this cheap sealed blood acid battery charger that I got off of eBay for $6. Now, this actually came from the United States, surprisingly enough. I think you could probably get them even cheaper shipping directly from China. And as you can tell, it's meant for the Chinese market because, well, there's no holes on the plug. Usually things in America have holes in the plugs, and they also have polarization, which this also doesn't have. At least I think that's what it, it's called. Uh, I haven't taken this thing apart yet. I haven't really used it yet either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rechargeable sealed lead acid battery, which I used to charge in a basically a backup battery charger. This one. Don't know. Don't know if I trust it. Uh, if you look on the back of it, you can see five to seven amp hours takes a little more than six hours. Nine amp hours takes a little more than ten. And fifteen to twenty-five can take thirteen to twenty-five hours to charge. I don't know if I trust this thing to be plugged in that long, to be honest with you. But let's uh, just measure the voltage of this battery. See if it'll be dead enough. It should be. Should be an, at least under 12. 12.4 volts. This little battery has quite a bit of carrying power on it. I've had this thing hooked up to the uh, oil pump, actually, that I did a video on. And after doing many oil changes, it never slowed down, never lost too much voltage. But it could probably still use a little bit of a charge. So, without further ado, let's plug the charger in. And I'm kind of curious how much power this charger is actually putting into the battery. And I'll check voltage. Okay, as you can see I plugged it in. My plugs are conveniently there. And the red light's on. So it's working. Kind of amazed it worked that well that quickly. Let's see what the voltage is going into it. And it is 12.44. So it's putting a little bit of power into it. Uh, I, I think that uh, sealed blood acid batteries are supposed to be charged around 13. But I could be wrong about that. So, what I think I'm going to do is let this sit a while and see how warm this gets. Because usually these cheap chargers from China will either get very hot or, concerningly, not warm at all. So, let's uh, just let it sit a little while. Then I'll measure the temperature with my Harbor Freight Special <laughs> infrared thermometer. Tells me the battery's at 77 right now, right now, which is actually the ambient room temperature. So that makes sense. I'll be back. All right. So I just thought I'd point out this thing's been plugged in for about three minutes, and it's already getting kind of warm to the touch. So let's take the thermometer and measure. Where's the warmest? Probably right around there. Oh, 90, uh, 90, oh, there we go. That's getting quite a bit warm. Apparently the, uh, laser doesn't actually completely line up to where the sensor is. Go figure. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that has actually, got... oh. It's getting quite warm. All right, I will leave this plugged in for... I don't know. I don't know how long I want to leave it plugged in. That's getting very warm. Well, be back when it's, I guess, green. Or I fear it's going to catch fire and I have to stop. Yeah, so a funny thing happened while I was trying to charge this battery with this. It charged fine for probably about 20, 30 minutes. And then that light went out. 
And now, when I plug it back in, the light stays out. And if I check the voltage, it's not putting out any besides, you know, what's on the battery. So, I believe that this thing died already. I have a suspicion that there's going to be a fuse inside of this that might have blown because this thing gets really hot when it's charging. And if that's the case, I'm just going to disable it and see what happens. Uh, I don't see any screw holes or anything on the back of the thing. So maybe you just pop it apart. Oh. Yeah, you just pop it apart. There is the top, which has some very oddly placed dots of plastic. Uh, this is the circuit board itself, which is close to being deadly. Um, I shouldn't be, you know, holding this near that capacitor, but... Yeah, um, one thing I don't like about this is the separation between the live, you know, wall voltage, wall power, and this side, which is the low power. It doesn't seem like it's enough clearance, and there's no, uh, creepage holes or anything to prevent that. So, yeah, that gets corroded. You can get live voltage directly on the 12 volts out. That's lovely. Uh, but if you look, you'll see that. It would be the blown out fuse. And it's all blackened. And... It's clearly seen better days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that wire there, which is the power coming in, and solder it onto the other end of where the fuse is, bypassing the fuse entirely. Now this might end in a bang. You know, that might be funny. <laughs> so let me do that and come back. All right, so I don't know if you can see this, but I actually soldered a little piece of wire in between where the fuse used to be, and I just kind of soldered these, yeah, pretty much soldered that into place. Not the best solder joints, but this isn't the best product. And as you can see, this is the fuse that I pulled out of it. all burned. So, yeah, um, don't know what's gonna happen, really. I mean, I'm kind of concerned, but also kind of curious, because, you know, this shouldn't be done. But, <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? Uh, let me just make sure I didn't, you know, short anything on the main side. Uh, well, there's a bit of solder there. That wouldn't be helping anything. really wouldn't be helping. <laughs> uh, oh, one second. I got the residual solder out from between those connections. And, um, let's shove it back in. I do have it connected to the battery, which might be a bad decision, I will admit. But, let's plug this thing in. Be ready for a bang. Ooh. Ooh -hoo, hoo. Ooh. That was bad. That was really bad. Ooh. I have to be honest, I didn't expect it to actually um pop. 
I'm disconnecting the battery. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, apparently something went horribly wrong when uh, this thing was trying to charge the battery. So I wouldn't recommend this. And plug it in again. Oh, now it's not doing anything. Um, I'm, I'm gonna take it apart and see what broke. Uh, I do have to be careful because, well, the capacitor could be holding power and that would not be fun. Be right back. So, I just shorted the clips at the end. And by the way, I use these to get the b terminals off the battery and just go touching them by myself. Um, I just realized there's a pebble from a fish tank on here. Okay. Um, shh. Ooh, you see it smoking? <laughs> Ooh. That, um, transistor. Just got blown to smithereens. Let me get the uh, macro lens on this and try and get a better look. All right, so this seems to be what took the brunt of the power. And as you can see, that is just torn up. The, uh, the capacitor next to it didn't handle too well either. Um, yeah see the uh, heat sink actually has bits of uh, the exploded residue on it bottom of the board looks fine actually uh, let me there we go get the uh, bottom of the board looks a okay Yeah, so I would certainly not recommend buying one of these. I mean, you get what you pay for. I use this to charge the battery a little bit, and, uh, didn't fare too well. I mean, of course, I shouldn't have replaced the fuse with a uh, piece of wire, but I wanted to see what would happen. I was pretty satisfied by that. So, I mean, if you've ever had the question, should I trust a cheap sealed lead-ass battery from eBay? that came from China, the short and long answer would be, don't. <laughs> it's not going to work for long. And if you replace the fuse, it might do that. So anyway, I th hope you've learned something as well as I did about electronics and fuses. <laughs> I had a good idea that was going to happen, but I thought it'd be fun. Surprised it didn't pop the breaker. That'd be really funny. But, um, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Major Chip, signing out. And just one final thing. I just thought I'd show that this exploding thing actually didn't kill my battery. Which is nice. Because as you can see, it's showing 12.48 volts. And if I were to attach a lamp to it, it should light. <laughs> I'm still in awe of how awesome and yet horrible that was. <laughs> Yay, my battery didn't get killed. Alright, Major Jip out.